Happy Halloween, everybody. He is Jalen Rose. What up, doll? I'm David Jacoby. And on the cool check-in. Together, we are Jalen Jacoby. What is it that we do? We give the people what they want. So much to discuss today, but we start in Philadelphia, where two of the best bigs in the game win at it. We had a full-on scuffle, a kerfuffle, a back and forth. There's one headlock. There's some pushing and grabbing. And then it goes to the ground. And then we get Ben Simmons put down in a chokehold. There is so much going on. Jalen Rose, do you consider this a hold me back moment or a real fight in the National Basketball Association? I consider this a real fight in the National Basketball Association when Ben Simmons is on the back of Carl Anthony Towns' back and choking him to the point mm -hmm. where Carl Anthony Towns has to tap out on the ground to get him to let him go. Jalen, I don't grappling. think he tapped out. He didn't a tap out. He bodies. didn't tap out. I'm a backup cat. He did not tap out. He was just kind of <laughs> trying to get up and slam in the ground. I'm going to back Towns on that one. Go ahead. I'm going to back um, Teague because he had Towns back just like mm -hmm. Simmons had Embiid's back. And so when the league looks at this, obviously yep. they'll both get suspended. Ben Simmons is going to get suspended. But mm -hmm. can you run that video again? What people are sleeping on is the Jeff Van Gundy-ish moment for the coach <laughs> that tried to get involved. Oh, did Don't Brown? sleep on the coach. <laughs> no, the assistant coach oh, yeah, trying to yeah, get right involved. Here. If you watched it from the other angle, <laughs> he got in the wrong place at the wrong time for the wrong reason. Oh, it's great. Oh, there yeah, he tried to get up oh, there. Yeah, he got, got, he got it an angle twisted. It was <laughs> <laughs> great. It was great. And, of course, both Embiid and Carl Anthony Towns faced the media after the big fight, and here's what they had to say. First of all, I ain't no b uh, <laughs> So, nah, there was not a lot of talking. Uh, I mean, uh, you were kind of happen out of nowhere. You know, I just did what I had to do. I was just, you know, trying to control myself. You know, it happens. It was a competitive game. It was a competitive game. I'm, I'm disappointed we lost. How do you view what happened with you? It was just a competitive, it's a competitive game. That's all it was. Are you all disappointed in yourself to get drawn into something like that? It was competitive. Did you take a swing at him or are you trying to get him in a headlock? This is competitive. It's a competitive basketball that was being played. Timberwolves PR was like, listen, here's what you say. Just say the word competitive over and over and over again. Just say competitive, and then we'll get out of here, and then we'll, we'll regroup, and then you can make a statement later. What do you think about the sound from both of them after the game? Two of the most skilled bigs in the game. When we talk mm -hmm. about Porzingis a lot, I always mention that he's going to be one of four players that I believe will average 20 points and have two blocks. Anthony Davis, and these are the other two guys that make up that foursome. Really talented. I'm so glad that they were in close proximity of one another versus having the space to throw real punches. Good point. So Good ultimately point. just grabbing and wrestling one another stopped that from really escalating into an ugly scene. Well, one thing that always happens is after the fight, it escalates on social media. It started with Joel Embiid, and he took to social media, as everyone does nowadays, and he said, great team win. I was raised around Lions, and Cat pulled on me tonight. Jimmy Butler, I miss being part of the third stringers. <laughs> I got his mom giving me middle fingers, which is actually a fact. That's some serious, serious real estate. And, of course, after that, Carl Anthony Towns had to respond, and he did so. He posted this picture with <laughs> the finger on Joel Embiid with some words raised around Lions. Cap, 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 clown, clown. And he also posted a follow-up of Mr. Embiid crying after losing to the Raptors. Jalen, what do you think about the social media beef afterwards? Well, it's almost like with Baker Mayfield, and I talked about this with LeBron James, it's one thing to have an opportunity to say something. And then when you have to go back and clarify it on social media, it always loses a little luster, mm -hmm. if you ask me. But mm -hmm. at the same time, when Joel does put it out there, if you're Carl Anthony Towns, you must respond, especially when he puts your mom as a part of the tweet. 
Ooh, that's a good point. I didn't I didn't really think about the mom part, but the mom was in the tunnel. Like, looked like she was really wanted smoke with Joel Embiid. I'm here for all of this. I, I love the wrestling stuff. I know we're not supposed to promote violence, but I just love the drama. I love that they actually don't like each other. I love that they go to social media and they go back and forth. I love that they give us so much to discuss. It's just, I just, I just really like this aspect of the NBA when it feels like players are not best friends. They're actually going at each other. And to put it in Carl Anthony Towns' words, it's a competitive game again. Well, Jalen, we have some bad news. Some really bad news. Steph Curry is no longer healthy. While the Warriors were getting waxed by the Suns, Steph Curry went up and then went down on his hand. Baines fell on him. He now has a broken hand. We don't know exactly how long he'll be out, but it sounds like it'll be a couple months. Jalen, Woj is saying that they're now scouting and preparing for a high draft pick. What are the implications of this injury for the Golden State Warriors. On NBA Countdown, Jay Williams said that the Warriors wouldn't make the playoffs. Mm -hmm. I said that they would based on two things, Steph Curry and Draymond Green. Yep. You take Steph out of that equation, now his statement becomes an accurate one. This squad will not make the playoffs, and that's obvious. But I have to do the national media thing that you know we like to do, whether it's Shea Gilders Alexander or Tyler Hero, talk about our guys before everybody else is mentioning them. While Steph Curry did get injured, and that's unfortunate, I'm somebody that's broken his hand before, broken his wrist before. I have a plate and five screws in my hand. That's going to take him almost two months to get back. But let me make sure I say this. Say Aaron Baines is balling. Aaron oh, yeah. the, Baines the Suns are balling. is balling. The Suns are Correct. balling. They beat so the Clippers. I, they were right I, up right with the Nuggets. And then here they are waxing the Warriors. Like the Suns, I'm not going to say they're going to win the West, but they've played really well out the gate this season. Please continue, Mr. Rose. I, I'm the league pass fanboy type of person that works in the media. And he been balling. With that being said, no Steph Curry. It's going to be interesting character-wise how D'Angelo Russell approaches the rest of this year. Mm. Because he did get a big-time contract. Yep. He was an all-star last year. Yep. Now you're playing meaningful minutes without the Splash Brothers. And when you say that the Golden State Warriors are not going to make the playoffs, and I believe that to be true, if you're a player on that team, it's a lot of season left. A lot of season it, left. It's a lot of season left. A lot left. of games. So they got be a lot of games to left see. to play. Him in particular. They're gonna put, yes. They're going to put sneakers on the 76 more times, 77 more times, and they're going to expect to win every time. And when they need buckets, they're going to look to D'Angelo Russell. That's that's their main scorer now. That's what the state of the Warriors is. You mentioned League Pass. Both you and I are on League Pass, and we're both on text. And there was a lot of text exchange about the game that went down in Washington between the Wizards and the Rockets. The final score of this game was... 159 to 158, and it didn't even go to overtime. We had Harden with 59 points and the one-point win. He had some big free throws at the end. Jalen, you and I were both watching this game. What was your biggest takeaway as you saw the scoring and the scoring and the scoring? Look at that, look at all that red, white, and blue out there from the Rockets, from the Wizards. All that was missing was the ABA red, white, and blue basketball. That's all <laughs> that was missing. I, right now, want to give the NBA idea. You know hey. how teams have multiple jerseys. Mm -hmm. You should have multiple colors of the basketball. In particular, oh. a red, white, and blue one oh. to pay homage to the ABA. High scoring like game idea. like this reminded me of that, seeing the colors out there on the floor. What are your thoughts on that? So one thing that I want to talk about in this game is the Rockets' performance. Sure, they won. There was a lot of scoring, but it was a high-volume scoring from Harden, and low-key, we had a triple-double from Westbrook. Do you consider that to sort of be the balance where Harden is looked to to score and Westbrook is looked to to fill the stat sheet and do the other things as well as score? You know how you're a terrific and amazing professional host. You're handsome. I love your denim uh -oh. jacket, but you didn't uh -oh. answer my question. What do you oh, no. think about the red, white, and blue basketball idea? Jalen, wait a second. I love the red, white, and blue basketball idea. I already said that. And if we're going to start calling each other out for not answering questions, you don't want to start that with me. You don't want to start that with me. You've already not answered my questions like four times, and we're in the first segment of the show. Don't start that with me. Let's move on. Again, yes, sir. like I said, we're in the yes, first sir. segment. But me, we're on the fourth topic. 
and we haven't even got to the World Series yet. We had a Game 7 of the James World Series. James the best scorer in the game. In Houston, Game 7 of the World Series. It was tight. We had some good starting pitching until the game was opened up. Rendon with a home run there. And then the Nats' bats got to the Astros pitcher. Opposite field for Kendrick. And that just opened up the game there. That gave them a one-run lead. And this Soto line drive gave them more runs. And it was over for the Astros. The road team won every single game of this series. The road team won every single game of this series. What do you think about this horse, uh, historic win for the Nats? I'm glad we opened the show with Tim Kirchin, our amazing basketball mm. uh, uh, MLB analyst. Where's Jessica Mendoza when you need her? Where's CeCe Sabathia when you need him? Didn't I tell you this severe underdog Nationals team was going to win the World Series? Didn't I, Jaylen, didn't I try to tell you this? Jalen, you know I don't like to compliment you. You know, it's like the, it's, it's my least favorite thing in the world is to compliment you on wax, but I have to say this. <laughs> you said that every one of your baseball picks this postseason was right. Every single one of your picks in the baseball postseason was correct, including Game 7 where you chose the Nats. Thank you, sir. And now, what I appreciate about this Nats team, other than Strasburg and Scherzer, who clearly were lights out, didn't lose a game throughout this playoffs. I told you this was reminiscent of the Diamondbacks. I saw this movie before with Randy Johnson and Kurt Schilling. But let's mm -hmm. take it to the dugout. I'm enjoying the fact that baseball players are actually showing personality yep. and having fun yep. when they do something. I don't mind players hitting home runs and carrying the bat to first place. This nope. is the type of thing that needs to be done to energize their fan base. But for the Nationals... Again, their pitching was the key. They got it done. As you know, I'm not surprised. I loved it. The Soto shuffle. I, mean, I love Soto so much. I love the way that after the home runs, they do a little dance and then someone like hits the water thing. It just they seemed like they were having a lot of fun. It reminded me a little bit of the Warriors like four or five years ago, where they seemed like they were having the most fun and getting the most wins. Congrats to the Nats and the whole district. Celebrate. I always say people don't celebrate enough. Celebrate this. You never know when it's going to happen again. Jalen, Kevin Durant was right here at the seaport today, and he was on first take, and he said something about his decision to leave Golden State that absolutely blew my mind. We will play that for you right after this.